Welcome to SBDC webinar. Today's topic is basic financial management. I am Linda Fitzgerald and your presenter today will be Joe Rodola. The Shasta Cascade SBDC, here we provide no cost, confidential one-on-one -on -one advisory services to both entrepreneurs and small businesses in Shasta and Trinity counties. And if you are not in one of those counties and you're watching this video, we're so glad you're here. If you are in the United States, you have an SBDC located in your county. So feel free to go to Google, type in SBDC and your town or your county, and you'll find one near you where you can get similar training. Because all SBDC offices have advisors in a variety of different uh, areas that they specialize in. And they're here to meet with you. And what's wonderful about the ability to meet with these people I already said it, it's no cost. And that's because your tax dollars have already paid for this service. It is a wonderful service. Joe, who's giving the presentation today, he helped me start my business five years ago and I've taken his financial classes. So you are in really good hands. And a little bit more about this, what we're doing right here is we are funded by the US Small Business Administration, the state of California and Humboldt State University. Later on, at the end of the event, we will talk with you about an email you are going to get. And I want to ask this at the beginning. Please, please, please fill out the survey in that email because that survey shows our funders the value that we're offering. And that keeps the money flowing so we can keep taking care of you, our clients. And now I would like to introduce you to Joe Rodola. Thank you, Linda. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is a... a He's talking about pivoting, uh, we have decided to pivot this class for this event in a slightly different direction, specifically because of COVID-19. Uh, hate to be repetitious, it's quite depressing, I understand. But like many of you out there in the business world, you've had to pivot and we have too. So what we've done in this particular presentation tonight is gone and, and kind of uh, uh, adjusted, adjusted this class to more coincide with sole proprietors. Sole proprietors and self-contractors, okay? So this, this is going to make a lot more sense than the other bigger class that we have, which is really set for corporations and LLCs. That class will be offered again July or August. Uh, you will get invitations to all these classes. We love you to attend as many of these as you can, because guess what? They're all free. What a deal. Uh, we're paying for it with our tax money. We might as well enjoy a little bit of what we're doing with this. So I'll do that other, I'll call it bulkier, more number crunching class. Uh, sometime in July or August, but this one is designed specifically for what we've experienced and you've experienced in the area of having to apply for disaster loan funding. And guess what happened today? This is kind of a little side note, it's not on a slide. Shasta County is included in a new disaster declaration by the United States. And that one is a drought disaster. So all the northern counties, or many, you know, almost all of them, of the northern California counties are now included in another disaster loan program specifically designed for people that have been affected by the drought. So you just don't know, you know, you just don't know. So financials are going to be very important. And as you can see by this little slide here, obviously I'm a numbers guy. 45 years credit industry, 25 years as a commercial lender and manager of a bank. I have my own business for 10 years. My 10th anniversary just passed in May. And I've been working as a small business advisor with SCED, Superior California Economic Development, and SPDC for the last eight years. So I definitely, I am a old guy. Welcome to my island, as you can see in my background. No problem, man. There you go, a little bit of Bahamas going there. Uh, uh, hopefully one day you'll be able to afford to buy your own island, a small Minnesota. Let's, let's work towards that, how's that? 
Okay, so here's the agenda. Introduction to the course quick. We're going to talk about numbers. Numbers is the name of tonight's class. All dollars and cents and numbers related. Talk about the balance sheet, income statement, a couple of basic ratios. We're going to walk through how financials migrate from your P&L to the tax returns, specifically the Schedule C, and a quick wrap up. We should be out of here by seven. You can ask questions along the way. Linda moderates these wonderfully. We make a great team. So we'll be able to answer questions hopefully along the way and definitely at the end. So here's the objectives. We're gonna talk about the reports. Hopefully you can identify them. Uh, customized to your needs. Obviously every business is a little different, okay? Uh, again, if you're a corporation, you're gonna have a different situation than an LLC. If you're a partnership, you're gonna have a different situation than a sole proprietor, okay? Talk about making uh, decisions based on that information and of course learn about the financial vocabulary because as you're dealing with banks and financial institutions, we have our own language, right? We got uh, uh, debt to income ratios, loans to value, LTVs. We have all sorts of acronyms. So you're gonna learn some of those acronyms tonight. And of course, be able to get a hold of me and Linda and our wonderful crew uh, of ever-growing consultants, both locally and throughout Northern California, which we'll talk about just briefly. Okay, we already talked a little bit about your businesses. I'm not gonna go ahead and do this at this point. Suffice it to say that this particular class is geared towards sole proprietors, partners, uh, and solely owned LLCs even, okay? So understanding the numbers, again, financial statements are numbers, okay? Mostly dollars and cents, but numbers related. So let's go ahead, and I'm gonna gear this first slide to sports. So uh, what does anybody think, and you can go ahead and put this in the, uh, uh, what was it, a chat? We have a chat option there, Linda, do we? All right, it takes me a second to turn my mic on. Yes, we have the chat. So people are so, welcome yeah, to type with their comments fine. in there. There you go. So what does the number nine in the sports vernacular mean to everybody out there? Anybody? Number of innings. That's it. Number of innings in a baseball game. And thank the Lord, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a, a truncated 60-game season from the Major League Baseball. So that's exciting for those of us like baseball. What's the number one mean to anybody? How about number one? Means you won. <laughs> That's right. First place. There you go. I like that. <laughs> kind of, I, can, uh, I owe you 10 bucks. Okay, so we, <laughs> we, we, we've got two for two. What about 300? What does the number 300 mean? Anybody know that one? Perfect score in bowling. That's it. That's perfect. Three for three. So as you can see, numbers mean things all the time. And so does your profit and loss and your balance sheet. It's numbers that mean stuff all the time. If you go to school, you have a grade point average, you got report cards. Those numbers take you all the way through to when you want to enter into college. Same thing as a small business owner. Financial reports are your report card of your business. It's very simple. So why are financial statements necessary? Well, you want to know if you're going to make money, right? Making money is probably the A number one reason that uh, you want to check the financial statements. Uh, how many times should you check financial statements? Some people believe they should check it weekly. I like to say at least every two weeks as a small business owner myself. Uh, some people don't look at it till the month or two months go by, and that's too late, in my opinion. You need to know, and especially, of course, now with COVID, you guys obviously had to do it even quicker than that, to be able to pivot onto an online service. Maybe you had a storefront, and now you had to go online. You had to pivot quick. So suffice it to say, you need to know what your sales are doing as quickly as you possibly can to make those moves. Also helps with the health of the business bookkeeping, what you're going to pay to the IRS, and do you have enough money to 
to work through and survive. Sources to the financial statements. Of course, you have the accounts of record. And by the way, just to let you know right now, uh, and I, uh, I'm going to remember to add a slide to this particular presentation with our list of consultants, but I'm going to bring up Rebecca right now. Rebecca, we have a wonderful lady, and she offers a phenomenal, some of you may have already taken this QuickBooks class from her. But suffice it to say, she is a certified QuickBooks specialist, okay? She has uh, uh, gone through a, a extensive training in the area of QuickBooks. If you guys are using QuickBooks to track your financials, uh, what a resource to have her at least assist in checking it out for you, giving you second opinions if you have your own accountant, perhaps. And if nothing else, just to, you know, Say hi, because she can do these reviews at no cost to you. And she's a QuickBooks specialist. So we're lucky enough to have her with us on board. To make an appointment with her, all you got to do is contact Emily, 222-8323. She'll set up an appointment for you to either visit with her, do a Zoom online or, or, or a Skype meeting, uh, or, of course, come here. We're starting to open up the office again. Unfortunately, we got to do the mask thing, uh, which is, which is not, you know, understandable. Got to wipe down between clients. We're not having as many clients do in person as we obviously used to. But we're starting to get to that point where we can actually have you come in and see us. And there's, of course, types of numbers. You got assets, liabilities, what's capital revenue, and of course, expenses. We'll talk about that as we go forward. Common normal financial statements, there are two a balance sheet, and a profit and loss, otherwise sometimes called an income statement. Those are the two biggies. There are a lot of other capable sheets you can have. You have, uh, if you have employees, you could have payroll uh, information sheets. Uh, you can have tax sheets, especially if you have QuickBooks. But to borrow money, to go into a bank or a financial institution or even go to the SBA during this, this COVID situation, those are the two biggies you got to have, balance sheet, profit, and loss, okay? Having a year-to-date 2020 profit and loss through, at this point, hopefully the end of June, because we're through, what, the halfway point of the year, aren't we? Uh, and then, of course, 2019 should be finished. Taxes are officially due if you owe money in two weeks. The 15th of July is, as far as we know at this point, the drop dead date to send in any tax money to the IRS. So uh, hopefully your taxes are done there. And if you applied for any of these loans, especially the disaster loans, you probably have already done your taxes. So that's a good thing. Linda, we have any questions at this point? We're pretty clean. We do not have any yet. If you would like to ask a question, you are welcome to turn your microphone on and ask, or you can type it in the chat. I realize that it might take you a minute to get the question typed in the chat. And if you do get it in, in between Joe's question moments, I'll be happy to read it at his next break. Wonderful, thank you very much. So I'm gonna start with the balance sheet first. It's, it's, it's technically one of the least used uh, of the financial statements for people that are like, well, I'll give you an example. The simplest type of business to open is a small service business. So if you offer, offer a service of any kind, uh, Linda and I are, are, are two of those types of businesses where we offer services. Uh, we don't have a lot of uh, uh, assets to worry about. We don't have, thank the Lord, a lot of liabilities or debts to worry about uh, because we operate very simply out of our cell phones, our laptops. In many cases, we operate out of our homes, second bedrooms where the laptop sits plugged into the wall. Uh, uh, and so we don't have a lot of, of, of equipment. We don't have inventory. The inventory we carry is in our heads. It'd be kind of interesting if we could 
value what our brain is. How about that? Never thought of that. Valuation of our head. How about that? Uh, so we don't really have a lot to, to, to put into a balance sheet. But let's go ahead and talk about the balance sheet because a lot of people that are selling product have a storefront, have equipment, or own buildings. Oh boy, tell you what, you're going to have a balance sheet for sure. So the definition of a balance sheet shows the state and health of the company and it's a financial snapshot in time. Okay. Theoretically, the balance sheet, number one, has to balance. How about that? So assets, so the total assets that you have, assets being money and so forth, equals your debt plus equity value in the proper in the business itself. So it could be equity in the in the property also, but it's normally equity in the business. So assets equals liabilities plus equity. And you'll see this uh, actually laid out in the format here shortly. So what's an asset? Assets are good, right? Assets are a positive. Uh, if you had a college degree, that could be an asset to your ability to get uh, a job, right? So assets are positive. So assets in a balance sheet are cash accounts receivable, real estate, equipment, computers, software, Anything that has a tangible value. So what's a liability? Liabilities are normally a negative thing, right? So the other term for liabilities is debts. So things you owe, bills you owe to the vendors, loans you're carrying or credit cards, accrued taxes you haven't paid, mortgages, all these are considered liabilities. So what's equity? Equity, again, is what the company owns, all the, the, the technical assets, okay, minus what you owe. So hopefully what you own is better than what you owe. And the difference will be the equity of the business, okay? So what your business is worth at book value. So it's dollar value, not market value. I'll give you an example of a difference between book value and market value. If for some crazy reason, and this is kind of a slanted uh, uh, analogy, but you'll get the idea. If you see golden arches, uh, beautiful uh, two hump golden arches, what do you think about as far as companies are concerned? Anybody? McDonald's. That's right. McDonald's. Very good. Thank you. Uh, McDonald's. So McDonald's golden arches aren't a physical thing. They are at the, at the, at the restaurants. But the arches themselves are a trademark. So trademarks, guess what? Have value, right? And so there's a difference between book value and market value because the arches themselves aren't a physical item. If you had a set of golden arches, the size of what they put in restaurants, they'd be worth bazillions, right? They'd be very heavy. So golden arches are a good example. The, the Geico Gecko, how about that? There's another trademark. All these little pieces of the puzzle that a lot of us don't have because we're not that big, but you can have things that are non-tangible assets as well. So here's, of course, the list of the asset types, okay? And we're not going to break them down too crazy in our small sole proprietor situation because we normally don't have current assets, fixed assets, you know, unless we have a building. If we own a building we're operating out of, we could have a fixed asset. But a current asset typically can be converted into cash within 12 months. So we never consider real estate as a current asset. It may sell quickly, but real estate's not made to sell quickly. So the only things considered in current assets are cash, marketable securities, accounts receivable, those are bills you sent out that you haven't got the money yet. Inventory, because you're carrying a product in your, uh, uh, in your space that you own, 
and of course any prepaid expenses. Could be a prepaid tax, could be anything of that nature. Those are called current assets. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's a number that's considered your liquidity. It's, it, it makes you more liquid, okay? So the more you have in cash, marketable securities, and so forth, the more liquid your business is. That's a good thing. Fixed assets, again, we kind of briefly talked about that. Many of us in the small sole proprietorship arena don't have much in the way of fixed assets. Typically converted to cash longer than 12 months, right? So those things would be building equipment, trademarks, goodwill, which we talked about, the golden arches, and depreciation, which normally comes into play if you have equipment and real estate. Depreciation actually writes off the value of that particular asset as time goes by. Uh, bankers like to call that funny money because depreciation on a, a balance sheet uh, is normally added, and, and a financial statement, is normally added back into your total profits because it's, again, it's not real money. It's what I call funny money. There's two types of liabilities. How about that? So two types of assets, two types of liabilities. You got current liabilities, those things that are due in 12 months of your uh, business cycle. Accounts payable, payments to vendors, Current portion, the next 12 months of your payment on your real estate, or if you have a big uh, a building, right, your mortgage for the next 12 months. A balance on revolving debt. Revolving debt is always called current. Accrued payroll taxes and accrued sales tax. Especially in retail, obviously, you might have sales tax involved. That's current liabilities, and of course, then you have long-term liabilities. That would be the mortgage after the 12 months payments, equipment debt after 12 months payments and any notes payable long-term. And total liabilities is derived by adding current liabilities to long-term liabilities. No, no fancy rocket science here. These are just terms, you know, that you can use to remember. The other thing about this is this. You people are listening to a lot of jargon here, aren't you? A lot of, uh, of, of financial jargon. If you want to do a complete review of your financials at any time, I love to go over these with you when you have a minute. You all can be, if you're not already, clients of ours. Most of you are already clients of ours. If you want to go through, get you know, let's get to the uh, rest of July. We'll get, get you know, through the PPP loans and the, and the idle loans. We're going to get in those disaster loans in everybody's hands as much as possible. Let's get those going. So let's say August, September, things hopefully are starting to, we can hope, calm down. Doesn't look like it's going to calm down anytime too soon in the big cities. Hopefully those big cities will not affect us up here. Let's cross our fingers and cross our uh, toes that uh, our lovely governor doesn't uh, do something crazy. But, but hopefully we'll be more normal come September. Uh, uh, up here in the North State, you want to come in and do a free review with me together, the two of us, look at your numbers. Hey, let's do it. Doesn't cost you a dime. And again, it gets me kind of excited because I'm a numbers guy and I love doing it and I missed it the last three months. I've just been talking about these disaster loans. So people are starting to come in and say, I want to open stuff. I want to buy stuff. I want to get regular financing. I get kind of thrilled. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at those for you. I'll be happy to go over them with you if you have questions. Okay, so what's owner's equity? Basically, it's the net worth of the business. Okay, every business has a net worth. Uh, again, for those of us that are sole proprietors, our net worth is normally fairly limited. Hopefully, our net worth is what we have cash in the bank. Unspent money. One of the things I want you all to consider, if you haven't already done so, hugely important. If you do not have, as a sole proprietor, a separate bank account for your business, do it now. Do it now. Have a separate bank account. 
you want to be able to separate your, separate your personal life from your business life. Okay. I own a business, Joe Radola's Debt Consulting. Any money I get from that business for any kind of class I teach, contract I charge and bill, goes into that bank account. Then I pay my business bills, insurance, my rent over at the EDC, uh, my phone bill, uh, you know, any of the things that I charge against my business come out of that bank account. My personal rent, my personal utilities, city of Reading bill comes out of my personal account. So what happens? I have to transfer money from the business account over to my personal account to cover the personal debts, right? So that way you have fantastic tracking, makes it a lot easier now that this is, uh, again, the second time I've done these, uh, 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 these disaster loans in three years, uh, let's face it, we don't need any more, right, guys? Yeah, we, we want to settle down a little bit. But suffice it to say, in the last three years, we had the car and the campfire, and now we've had COVID in, in about 20 months, 18 to 20 months, and these disaster loans are getting a little tiring. But I'll tell you what, having this information accurate and ready to go. Let's, let's give another example. Let's say that, uh, heaven forbid, we got to close again in November. I don't want to even think about that, right? But let's say something goes nuts and the, and the governor closes us down again. Let's face it, the government's going to probably come out with another program. They're going to probably come out with another disaster loan relief bill and another disaster loan, uh, loan bill, whatever. Let's be ready. Let us all be ready for that when it comes. Let's make sure that our financial statements, our P&Ls are looking pristine, if nothing else, to tell you how you're, how you're doing, but to prepare yourself for any other uh, uh, programs coming out of out of the Treasury Department. We got to be ready. So that's another reason why we kind of prepared this, okay? All right, so here we are. Here's a simple balance sheet. And this again is based not exactly on, you know, Joe Rodolfo's debt consulting. This business is JR Consulting, so. Uh, anyway, this is December 31's balance sheet for JR Consulting. Uh, and again, you can see as a simple uh, sole proprietor, this is kind of tiny, isn't it? Because all you have is assets in this particular case for this company is cash in the bank. And maybe you have, uh, uh, you know, $100 cash for the business in case you need something quickly uh, that, that you have some petty cash. Okay. You might have some money billed out to somebody, haven't paid you yet. That's 200 and you may have $150 worth of supplies. So you have uh, paper, printer ink, right? All those little things that you might have that you have supplies for. So when you add that up on December 31, according to JR Debt Consult, your total assets were 2,950 bucks. Pretty easy to identify, huh? The liabilities of the company. What does the company owe on any of these things up above? Notes payable. Business credit card, $500 debt that you're making payments on. So that's the only liability that this company has. So you have $2,950 in assets, $500 in total liabilities. So what is the equity or retained earnings in the business? Well, what happens is the balance sheet's got a balance, right? So you take the $2,950 minus the $500, your retained earnings in the business is 2,450 bucks. Okay, so you add that to the total liabilities, total liabilities plus owner's equity equals assets, and it does, doesn't it? $2,950. So this is a perfectly balanced, perfectly readable and understandable balance sheet. Simple and clean, but perfect, perfect. You can tell that this particular business, its biggest asset is the fact that it's got money in the bank. Ah. I have a question. 
Yes. Uh, the retained earner earnings that often screw up my financial statement. How can I get a good handle of that specific item? Again, the, the, the easiest way is to have a real solid QuickBooks. Are you using QuickBooks? Yes. Okay. I'm starting so to use it. <laughs> well, okay, that's understandable. So as you grow your QuickBooks knowledge, and again, Rebecca can also assist if you're in the Reading Northern, uh, I, I keep forgetting that some of you may not be local. Uh, uh, by the way, SPDC offices like ours all throughout the state, and all throughout the country. So if you're calling from uh, in tonight from the Bay Area or whatever, there's people like us close to you. So just, just throwing that out. But if you're in the, in the area up here, we have Rebecca and she can help assist you if you haven't already done so to create the balance sheet portion, especially if you're a service, small service business, small sole proprietor. I never even thought about this till I started using QuickBooks. Uh, and I'll I'll be uh, I'll tell on myself. How's that? Uh, I've been in business ten years. Tenth anniversary was May tenth. I've only been on QuickBooks five years. The first five I didn't use QuickBooks. I didn't have a balance sheet at all. In fact, the first year I did QuickBooks, I didn't have a balance sheet. Okay. Uh, but it's cool to have a balance sheet because the, uh, the way banks, as we get a little further on in this in this thing. You're going to see that the banks use not only the P&L, profit and loss and uh, income statement, but they also use the balance sheet to make decisions on whether or not to give you money. So it'll come. It'll come with time. It'll come with usage of QuickBooks. And if you have questions, you're in the North State area, Shasta Trinity County, Rebecca will be happy to assist in getting that to you as well. It's kind of cool. Any other questions at this point? We don't have any in the chat. The people are welcome to turn on their microphones and ask. Very cool. Yeah, it's not, you know, I like to say that, that there's not a lot of rocket science here. It's true. But I can tell you from experience, both uh, Linda, David, our boss, um, uh, myself, Keith, Emily, all of us that tried to assist during this March and April, uh, specifically March and April, obviously was a mad dash to apply for every disaster loan possible. And so there was a lot of phone calls going on. I, I had my ear hurt. <laughs> I think all our ears hurt uh, trying to help because uh, SBA was trying to tell people stuff and it wouldn't happen. And yeah, well, we don't have to tell you that. But suffice it to say, we have seen in especially the small business arena, and I'm not talking, you know, 100 employees, 50 employees, I'm talking one or two employees, sole proprietors, their financials were not ready for, for the disaster. So this is kind of a wake up call for all of us that are in business to operate our businesses on the financial side like a business, okay? And many of us are, you know, are great with selling what we have or marketing what we know or, uh, or, or making things that, that, that we sell or knowing things. But a lot of us maybe are not the greatest accountants in the world. And so, hey, not a problem, you know what I'm saying? You ought to ask for help, we're gonna help. And we also have some wonderful people in town uh, that are bookkeepers, accountants, uh, uh, all the all the from CPAs with with fancy degrees, all the way down to the mom and pop uh, uh, accounting people. We got a ton of them, and don't be afraid if you get into a situation to ask for help. You may have to pay a few bucks. You got Rebecca for free. She can't do it all. She can't do your books for you. She can guide you. But we had a lot of people that can help out there in the field, okay? Wendy Wood was our first uh, uh, accounting specialist here uh, that I got involved with uh, uh, seven years ago when I joined uh, uh, SPDC. 
Uh, Wendy's got a wonderful business also. She's a great lady besides. She's also QuickBooks trained. And she's the one who convinced me to switch uh, from a thing I'm about to show you uh, to QuickBooks, okay? All right, so let's now go into the next one, the biggie, the one we most often see all of us as, uh, as owners of businesses, and that is the income statement or profit loss. Okay, so what's an income statement or profit or loss? It's uh, simply what you make minus what you spend equals profit, okay? So what you make minus what you spend equals profit. And again, most of us have looked at this thing, right? Either you make it yourself on an Excel spreadsheet, which I will show you one as soon as we're getting to the end of this particular section. Uh, you've seen it, right? One of the biggest mistakes that we have noticed, and I've noticed it for years, I'm an old banker, you, you saw the slide originally, old banker by trade, right? And I remember going back 30 years ago, holy smokes. I remember going back 30 years ago in the 70s and early 80s, and my customers and clients coming in and saying, hey, Joe, I had a great year. I sold a million dollars worth of stuff. And I say, hey, congratulations. You know, a million dollars 30 years ago, pretty good deal. Nowadays it's pocket change, right? But 30 years ago, a million bucks was kind of it. Then, I, of course, I'd have to ask the question. Okay, so you sold that much. How much did you make? Oh, nothing. And that, of course, is where, the, where I had to say, well, gee, that's too bad. Because if now you sold a million dollars and you have no profit and you want to borrow money, how are you going to make the payments? So there's a double-edged sword here that I'm going to bring up at this particular point. Don't always be so willing to, what is the saying? Cut off your nose to spite your face, right? There's the old saying, which means don't show zero profit. If you ever hope to borrow money from any normal bank or financial institution, your P&L better show you're making some dough, all right? If you show zero, it's great. You don't owe the IRS anything. I understand the reasoning. No, don't get me wrong. I love to show as low as possible to the IRS. Because all they do is sock it to us as uh, owners of businesses, right? You not only have to pay tax to the IRS, but you got to pay your own Social Security. Self-employment tax. That's a killer, okay? I can tell you with my wife being in business for herself in real estate for the last 20 years and me being a uh, sole proprietor owner for the last 10, showing a bunch of profit at the end of the year, you just go <clears throat> and twist the knife because you know you're going to have to pay the IRS based on your profit and you're going to have to pay self-employment tax for you on top of that. And that normally is the biggest number, okay? I make, say I clear net 20,000 bucks based on our tax, uh, uh, tax uh, uh, number, or tax rate, tax base rate. And so let's say I made $20,000 net profit. I have to pay about 1,000 a quarter in uh, prepaid tax, 4,000 a year to get close to breaking even to cover the expense for the IRS and self-employment. So that gives you a good idea of how much money you gotta set aside or make quarterly payments to the IRS for if you net 20 grand, see? All right, so what you sold, income and revenue, what you spent on the expenses, how much you have left, profit. Okay, pretty easy. Basic structure of an income statement for all businesses is the same, however, could be different for each type of business. A, a profit and loss or, or, or a financial statement for a uh, corporation is going to be different than a mom and pop sole proprietor, right? Completely different forms, completely different way it's done. If you, if you have your own corporation, you're going to be paid by the corporation, 
you're going to get a paycheck. Okay. The corporate corporation takes the brunt. It's one of the benefits of having the corporation, by the way. Then you would pay uh, 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 taxes on the income as if you made a, you know, you'd get a W-2. You'd have earnings. Okay. They'd take out taxes from you ahead of time. They'd pay your social security. So would the, uh, uh, so would the uh, uh, corporation pay the other half. Disability, unemployment, all that fancy stuff, right? Will come out of the corporation. Sole proprietor, not as easy. All right, so the income side, sales, revenue, and proceeds. This is derived by adding up your sales receipts for the period. Uh, there's methods when you count, but for our particular purposes here, we're counting the money when we earn it, okay? When we earn it. So for instance, uh, uh, or when we get it, you can earn it or get it. Uh, in my particular case, I take the money and post it when I get it, okay? I technically don't have any accounts receivable. I know when I bill out for money at the end of the month, but I don't count it. I don't count my chickens before they hatch, which means I don't count it in my income statement until it goes into the bank account. Uh, and this should be income from normal operations, obviously. Typically not income from one-time events. If you had an asset you sold and you got money from that asset, right, a piece of equipment, you sold that piece of equipment, you got 10,000 bucks, that's not income, okay? That's a one-time event, it's, it's tracked differently. If you sell merchandise, right? Let's say you sell this pen. You sell this pen, uh, you buy it wholesale. Uh, let's say you buy this wholesale pen for, uh, let's pick a number, it's easy. Let's say you pay 25 cents for this pen and you sell it for a buck. So you have a dollar of, of income and your cost of goods is 25 cents. See? And the method of calculating cost of goods can vary from industry to industry, but a lot of times it's taken into consideration when the item is sold. So, okay. A gross profit, not to be confused by, with net profit. We'll talk about that a little briefly uh, as we go forward again. Guess what, though? As a service business, no cost of goods. Okay? We, fortunately and unfortunately, Holland, huh, we, we can't value what's in our head. So we can't claim that as cost of goods. See? The other good news is, at this moment, I don't know how long it's going to last because the state of California is broke. But at the moment, we do not have to charge sales tax to our clients for our service. Again, don't know how long it's going to last, but for now, we'll take it. And we don't have to pay, uh, or our clients don't have to pay sales tax on service costs. And expenses are pretty easy, right? You got sales, general, administrative, uh, different types of, uh, of expenses typically listed in order of function. Sometimes it's alphabetical. Uh, expenses, are, you know, salaries, utilities, rent, office supplies, payroll, insurance, et cetera. Uh, uh, and again, most of the time those are listed as operating expenses, but sometimes they can be included in cost of goods. Just don't make sure that you're not double counting. Okay. Where did my cursor go? We went to sleep. There we go. All right. So operating pro profits derived by subtracting expenses from gross profits. Okay. So again, we're about to see this graphically, but for now, understand that you have income coming in. Okay. And you subtract your expenses from the income, and that's gross profits. This profit remaining after subtracting expenses paid to operate out of your business. Net profit is derived after taxes are taken into consideration. Uh, other things also could be included in that particular situation. And net profits do funnel flow to the balance sheet as retained earnings. So that's one of the accounting moves at year end. 
uh, when you hit the final button, if you're regular calendar year, December 31, that net profit figure, if you haven't drawn it all out, taken draws, uh, is called net profit and it flows to the balance sheet on the retained earning side, which turns into equity. We talked about how you get equity. Equity does come from net profits. So profit and loss, remember profits not confused with cash, they're not the same. Profits do equal cash flow, because profits, it's, it's showing how the money is flowing through the business. And profits are used for three things, pay down debt, reinvest back into the business, or take the money and run, distribute to the owners. Uh, and again, we'll talk about that a little bit briefly again, because that's another problem with most sole proprietors, is we're not showing draws appropriately from our business to us. The effects of profits can be seen on the balance sheet, obviously. Uh, profits are used, again, this is just a lot of uh, background information. Again, I'll be able to show it to you graphically when we get to the page. Obviously, the effects of losses are opposite. So losses flow to the balance sheet by decreasing retained earnings and reducing the equity in the, in the, uh, in the business. Obviously, much better to show a profit than a loss, uh, and, and thus the effects. So here, here, let me move this out of my way. Here is a rough 2019 profit and loss for JR Consulting, right here. So total revenue was $35,000 in this little company. So 36,000 uh, bucks. So that's gross profit because there was no cost of goods, was there? Cost of goods sold would normally be right below sales revenue and be subtracted immediately from those sales figures. So if you're in retail or, or are selling product of any type, your cost of goods goes right under sales revenue to end up with a gross profit figure. This company obviously is a uh, service business. And then you know, operating expenses, rent, 1,000 a month, utilities, 3,600 phone uh, for a year, phone, 1,500, so on, supplies, license, insurance. One of the things a lot of people forget to take off is mileage. There's two ways you can support travel expense. You can actually, if you're an LLC or a corporation, you can have the business buy those uh, cars, right? And there's a whole different way of tracking. But as a sole proprietor, my wife, for instance, for the last 20 years, has physically tracked as a real estate agent her miles on her car. Uh, there are apps now you can use on your phone to do the tracking. She did it the old-fashioned way. It works just as well. She got a little... Uh, folding small calendar book with the days of the month. She would set her tripometer in the morning when she got in the car, zeroed it out, wrote the number from the day before in the book, right? So if it was today, she'd be writing in this, this morning, June 29th total, clear the tripometer and go, go to work, right? show properties, uh, go visit the owners, uh, whatever. And then tomorrow she does the same thing. So how many miles I drive today? Writes it in the book, away you go. And you can get anywhere. I don't know what this year's actual number is. It'll be somewhere between 50 and 57 cents uh, per mile. I put 56 cents a mile in this particular uh, sample for mileage. So 56 cents per mile driven another $3,500 in expenses deducted for total expenses of $22,550. So if you made the $35,000 in sales minus the $22,550 and you decided to take owner draws for ten dollars of that, your net profit left is $2,450. That Twenty-four fifty is what you pay taxes on. Okay, that's what you pay taxes on. 
And the owner's draw would be what JR uses to pay personal expenses. The rent here is if uh, JR had a office at a thousand a month, okay? The $10,000 draw would probably go to help pay for the, ho the house payment at home or the house rent at home. But this way you show the flow of money from the business to you as a personal owner, okay? And then end up with a net profit. This is just one way to do it. Obviously there's many ways to do it, but this is one way and it's easy to see, I think, how this looks. So let's go ahead and uh, have some fun. You'll be getting, uh, hopefully, uh, Everybody tell me if you've got an income and expense 2020 showing up on the screen now. Everybody seeing that? Yes, we are. Okay, cool. All right, gang, this is an Excel spreadsheet. This is an Excel spreadsheet of that uh, I will send to you just uh, along with this, this uh, slide deck. And this is just a, a nice pre-made old fashioned monthly P&L income statement. So what happens is here is this is a fill in the blank. This is fun. So let's say for the month of January, wow. JR Debt Consulting made two grand. Boom, shakalaka. So it has all the sample uh, formulas built into this particular uh, uh, spreadsheet. Again, this is simplified. This is not QuickBooks, but I can tell you what I've done since I got stuck using this and I got hooked on it. I used it for the first five years of my business operation, personally, uh, and now I still use it. And then I, I'm kind of, uh, what do we call it? Uh, 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 crutching myself, right? I am, I'm using this to fill in my QuickBooks numbers. <laughs> How about that? It's kind of funny. But uh, so I'm doing it twice, but I, again, I'm so stuck on using this thing. Okay, so let's say you made sales of two grand. Let's say you sold a product and you sold to make that two grand, your cost of goods was 500 bucks. Boom. So your gross profit automatically subtracts there, you have 1,500 bucks to work with, right? We're good so far? Say you had 100 bucks in rent, 100 bucks in utilities, whoops, 1,000, we don't wanna be more. Telephones, 50 bucks, uh, paid insurance, uh, liability insurance for the business, uh, advertising, you got a little advertising going on. Uh, bought some office supplies, uh, drove a little bit around town, maybe, you know, let's say, a, I don't know, a couple hundred miles. So let's say it's 50 bucks there. And maybe you had dues or licenses. Just, do I have license in this list? You can change these names, by the way. These are not permanent names. You could always go in here and change advertising to read whatever you wanted because it automatically subtracts out whatever's in the expense category. As you can see, gives you total operating expenses, then it gives you net profit at the bottom. So it's kind of a cool way to track as you go. You can see why when I, when I write a check, when I, when I pay utilities, for instance, if I pay utilities and I'm charging it to the business, I just put the number in there, boom, when I write the check, pretty simple. Oh, here it is, tax and license. So let's say my business license came due Business license in Reading's uh, 50 bucks, and I think there's a $4 uh, something charge now. So I had to buy my business license uh, in January, so, so I paid 50, $54. So 100, 200, 3, 4, okay. So there you go. So at this second, if we looked at January's numbers, from what we just filled in, and I'm gonna send again a copy of this, Sold 2,000 bucks, cost of goods of 500. Your operating expenses were $479 from all those little things added up. Your net profit for the month of January is 1,021 bucks. 
How about that? Clean, simple, easy, uh, usable. If at least you do this, okay? If at least you do this, you're going to be in much better shape come December 31 when you have to do your, your Schedule C and your taxes than probably or maybe you are right now. If you're using QuickBooks already, you don't need this. Okay, you don't need this. But for those of us just starting out, for those of you who want a nice, quick, down and dirty, easy way to track money, and again, I'll send this to you because you're going to maybe know somebody that's going to want it if you don't want to use this. Uh, I, I've loved it since I got it. Okay, so save a blank copy somewhere on your desktop. Fill in a live one. So here's JR Consulting 2020 right here. And, uh, and go on. Okay, so now February comes along. Oh, boy, we sold three grand. What a deal. And the cost of goods that month for our three grands in sales is uh, 750 bucks. Boom. So you see what's happening. We're automatically going ahead and filling in the numbers. Rent doesn't change, probably. Utilities might change a little. Telephone bill might go up or down a couple of bucks. Insurance probably doesn't change. You won't have tax to license. That's once a year. Advertising, you probably stay the same there. No office supplies. You just bought them last month. That's fine. Say your travel went up, you went a little bit further, $75. Boom. So you sold 3000 bucks, cost of goods $750, $422 in expenses for the month. Now you got an 1800 profit. You go across, see what it's doing for you. It's adding up your annual profit right there. Okay? So you always know as you fill in the months across, where you stand in the eyes of the IRS. That's important, right? So, any questions on this dude? I love tracking stuff like that, Joe. Yeah, well, us math majors and number guys, I'll tell you, this, is, this makes my heart pitter-patter. Sorry about that. <laughs> I actually use a spreadsheet like this to track those big annual expenses where I get a better deal if I pay for a service once a year instead of monthly. And I don't right. want to be surprised by the payment. So I like to have a, a simple spreadsheet like this so I know ahead of time when I'm going to get hit with some of those larger bills. Yeah, it's very true. And the other cool thing about it is for me now that I've used this for 10 years is what I do 2021. I leave my 2020 data in the holes to begin with and or take a printed copy either way, wipe out the numbers, start again. And then like you say, you know, approximately what's going to happen when, especially if you're seasonal, if you're seasonal by any chance, it is sure important to know what you did last year and what to expect next year. Right? So, so again, now we have the COVID thing that's throwing a big curveball at us. Don't get me wrong. I understand. But, but normally, if you're a, a business that is seasonal, sure nice to know you got records back like this you can look at. So this is now uh, 2019. I started in 2010. So I have 10 through 2019. That's 10 years, right? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah. So that's 10 years of taxes uh, uh, starting with 2010's tax year and ending in 2019. So technically, this year is my 11th year of operating income and expenses I'm going to report. So uh, it sure is cool. It's also cool to look back to see how you've done as the years roll by. That's kind of exciting too. One of the things that threw me a, 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 in, a, in a monkey wrench, personal note, uh, I was a contractor here at SBDC uh, out of the last seven years, the first five years I was a contractor. So I was paid per hour, time spent, bill at the end of the month, and I get a check like three weeks later. So talk about accounts receivable. Anyway, uh, so, so I was, I was a uh, contractor. So my numbers here 
because I did classes, I did other things besides working as an SBDC consultant, my numbers here went up during those years, okay? Uh, now I'm, I'm actually considered an employee of Humboldt State because I'm required to be here so many days, they didn't want to take a chance of having me be considered a, because nowadays you all have to be worried, right? About a contractor and an employee, what's what? Because the state was getting real down and dirty about what the difference is between a contractor and an employee. If, you're, if your person's working set hours, only working for you, has a lunch hour, you give them vacation time, you give them sick leave, that's an employee no matter how you look at it, okay? So you have to be careful. So they switched me over to employee. So my net income now and profitability has dropped because I no longer report as a contractor. So that's kind of an interesting side note. All right, so putting it together, income statement is a picture of how management makes decisions. Balance sheet is a picture that reflects cumulative effects of management decisions and profitability. So one of the things I want to bring up at this point, oh, or any questions, of course, and then I got one more fun thing we're going to work with together. You're going to love this. We don't have any, any questions, questions in the chat, but people are welcome to turn their microphones on. Thank you. Can everybody see my uh, profit and loss business schedule C now? Yes, we can. Yay. So this is cool. If you wish, I can uh, uh, just let us know for sure if you want this or not. You may already know what this is. You may have an intimate relationship with your Schedule C. We hope you do. If you don't, we want you to. And to understand, even if you do not do your own taxes, what the Schedule C means to a sole proprietorship. This is the document that the IRS is going to hang their hat on to charge you taxes, okay? Even though you do a P&L at your house, either through QuickBooks or a, through a, a spreadsheet, until this gets into the IRS, they don't know how much you made. Now, if you're a contractor and you get a 1099 from your employer per se, IRS will know what your gross receipts are because they're going to get a copy of that, aren't they? That's what 1099s are for. 1099s are set up so we can't cheat the system as, uh, as uh, a business, uh, people running a business that are contractors, okay? The, the, you're going to get at the end of the year that you made 2000 bucks from this company. So you got to make sure that you reported that $2,000 somewhere on this page. Okay, so there you, you can see this is a fill in the blank uh, type of uh, form, the one that I copied here for us. Again, like I said, you copy, you got some questions you got to answer. Uh, do you participate uh, materially in the operation of a business during 2019? Uh, yes. If you started and acquired with 2019, check here, though that's blank. I've been in business 10 years. Do you make any payments in 2019 It would require to file form 1099? So that would be no, because I don't have any contractors working for me. And if yes, do you, did you or file a required form 1099? So that's no. Okay, so here we go. Gross receipts. Let's say we went ahead and used that $35,000 figure. Oops, let's get not crazy here. $35,000 figure here as uh, sales for the year of 2019, okay? I thought it was gonna automatically do that. I guess it's not. So then you gotta fill out uh, this line, which would be uh, gross profits, 35,000 bucks there, and uh, gross income, Total at five and six. That's, of course, if you had any the other income in, in, in six, most of us don't. So you have 35,000 bucks. Okay. So there's your total income side on part one, just like it is on your profit and loss statement, isn't it? That is your income. 
So then again, if you had expenses here of uh, advertising, uh, let's do a thousand bucks there. And uh, we're gonna use round figures. Uh, let's see, insurance, here we go. Other than health, this is liability coverage. Thousand there. Office expenses, thousand there. We're just gonna use nice numbers here. Uh, rent, you have a rent or lease section, okay? Uh, it's, uh, there's instructions on the back you gotta read. So again, these are most of the time done by your CPA or tax person. QuickBooks, a lot of times, can automatically help you fill out the Schedule C, okay? So let's, I'm gonna put rent in other business property in this particular case, since it won't let me fill in that blank at this point. So uh, let's say the rent's 12,000 bucks, thousand a month. Uh, supplies, thousand dollars for the year. Taxes and licenses, I'll do a hundred because I wanna keep it round. Utilities, 3,500, okay. So there you go. So total expenses. I really had wished this thing auto filled, but I guess it doesn't. So a thousand bucks here, thousand dollars there, another thousand bucks there, 12 grand for the rent, thousand dollars there. 100 bucks there, 3,500 there. So your total expenses uh, for the year, $19,600, okay? And then you get the magic net profit. Net profit, so net profit is what? 35,000 in income minus your 19.6. So your profit for the year in this particular case is 15.4. All right, so here is the magic Schedule C, okay? This is a clean Schedule C. It is a regular sole prop Schedule C, easy to understand. It takes the, in, you know, the information from your P&L whether it's QuickBooks or Excel spreadsheet, transfers it over here, your name, name of business, uh, uh, business name, what type of business you have, tax ID number, as a sole proprietor, 99.9% .9 of the time, use your own social security number. You can have a tax ID, of course, EIM, but social security is normally what's used. So again, as you add up the expenses, you get 19.6, 35,000 in gross revenues, 15.4 is your net profit. So that's what you pay your taxes on. The 15.4, they calculate on the next page what your tax would be against the 15.4 after deductions. You uh, uh, have to pay your uh, uh, self-employment tax off, the, off of this as well. Uh, and guess what? If you were doing a PPP loan, Okay, a, a payroll protection loan. This 15-4 number, this bottom line 31, is the number you had to take, divide by two and a half, uh, divide by 12, multiply times two and a half, and that became your maximum payroll protection loan as a sole owner. So as you can see, if you showed zero here, Couldn't get a PPP, could you? Because you have no profit, zero profit. Also, if you showed zero profit here, yes, you wouldn't have to pay the taxes, but you also wouldn't have any income to borrow money. Okay, how are we doing? We doing okay? Pretty good, no questions. We'll talk quickly about a couple of ratios. These, of course, don't have as big an effect on us as sole proprietors, but these are some of the ratios that the banks and financial institutions look at uh, to make decisions on whether or not to give you money. 
And this is again, normally in a situation where uh, we're not in COVID, right? So this is a normal year. This will be a normal year that these would really come into play. Because right now, February, March, late February, March and April, majority of us had very little, if any, income if you had to close down. If you, if you had to close down, couldn't sell stuff online, right? It was a, <clears throat> a major mess. So these wouldn't work as easily. But utilizing, uh, so working capital, what is working capital? It's current assets minus the liabilities. So in our particular case, uh, utilizing that little, uh, that little uh, uh, one that we made up, the little PNL, uh, current assets were uh, $2,950. Liabilities for that little company was 500. So our working capital was the difference, 2450. Obviously, we want a positive number there, current assets minus your current liabilities. If it's a minus number on your current assets to current liabilities, obviously that shows that you have no reserves, very difficult to cover if you had to pay stuff off quickly. And one of the things obviously that we have to look forward to working on as your business continues to grow. These ratios, as we're looking at them, can be worked out utilizing your financials. And if you wanna, and you want to come in and see Joe, we're starting to do in-person appointments with masks, obviously. We're starting to do in-person appointments. You can bring your financials in with you, your P&L and your balance sheet. We could run some of these numbers on your business. I can give you the exact numbers for you, okay? As a banker, put my banker hat back on. Uh, the current ratio is your current assets divided by current liabilities. So in this particular case, using that old little, uh, the little uh, uh, balance sheet and little P&L we made. So it's current uh, is 2950 on the current assets. Liabilities, again, we only had the credit card of 500. Number greater than one is good. And we're at like five point something on that number. It's, it's great. So again, if you're a, uh, uh, a, a small sole proprietor, these ratios normally look good if you have any money in the bank at all. And a quick ratio, the last one is your cash plus accounts receivable, any marketable securities. Again, sole proprietor probably don't have that. You may have accounts receivable divided by current liabilities. Uh, this is called the acid test, okay? We normally want to see a number higher than one. And again, we, with our simple uh, p and and balance sheet we used earlier in the samples, we ended up with a 5.6, which again is, is really, really good. Okay, really good. Then we have the profitability uh, calculations, the ratios, okay. Uh, we got gross profit margin and uh, regular or net profit margin. In our particular case, the numbers are the same virtually the same. So with that being said, the profit margin on here, hopefully the goal is 0.5 or higher. Number too low indicates the cost of goods are too high and the amount of revenue remaining uh, for operating expenses is too small. Our ratios look real good in our little business, okay? We're at basically gross profits divided by sales uh, is 1.0. So with us having to have a goal of a half or higher, 1.0 is great. Uh, and then the margin below indicates successful business is the earning profit, so it's net profit divided by sales. Goal is a positive number. Uh, when we did the calculations based on our little sample, we ended up at 0.35 positive. So that indicates that you're making some money based on profits to sales at about 35 cents on the dollar. Not bad, not bad. And these are just two of uh, two sets, five ratios of the ones that banks look at in financial institutions when you wanna go in and borrow money. The simpler the P&L and balance sheet, the simpler it is 
to gain financing if you're showing a profit and your credit's good. There's another piece of this puzzle we didn't talk about tonight because we're talking financials, and that is if you're going to borrow money, your credit's got to be decent. Okay? I just did a credit class a week or so ago. I guess it's two weeks ago now. Uh, not very many people showed up. Great credit class. Talks about what a good credit score is. Credit scores are very important in the decision-making factors, even on the idle loan. The disaster loan program, if you were carrying a 600 or 580 credit score into the application of the EIDL, you might have gotten the first decline. You might have been able to go back and re have, have them reconsider based on what happened to us all during COVID. But suffice it to say, you want a 700 plus as quickly as possible. The 700 credit score is the magic number, okay? That is the magic number that we all would like to have. On credit is a 700 plus. By the way, max is 850 on the credit scoring model called FICO. So 700 to 850, I'll tell you what, that's some really good stuff right there. Means you made your payments on time, you're not carrying huge balances on your credit cards, and you've had credit for a long period of time, probably exceeding 10 years or more without missing payments. So that's how that goes. It's funny, people don't understand a lot of times that on credit, uh, if indeed you have a car payment of $900 a month because you bought a uh, Lamborghini, I could throw that out as a crazy idea, but you get, the, you get the idea. So you owe a Lamborghini, you owe about 90 grand, and your car payment's nine fifty a month. Even though you're making the payments on that Lamborghini, that's going to have a negative effect on your score, okay? Because that's it's it's out of balance to the norm. One thing about credit scoring is is they like normal, okay? For instance, if you have a ten thousand dollar credit limit card, credit card, and you're carrying a balance of nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars, making minimum monthly payments each month huge credit score drop. Why? Because you owe everything you've got available to you on that credit card. You have no room for emergencies because guess what? In America, emergencies are normally covered, unfortunately, by plastic. So that's become a part of the credit score. Now, it's an interesting deal. Okay. Used to be you had to carry six months in, in, uh, of, uh, of expenses in your bank account as a savings buffer. If you do that, I love you. Don't tell my wife. But uh, 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 if you don't, credit cards have been the thing we normally have to protect us. Here's some cool websites. Uh, again, you'll be getting these in the uh, slide deck. Uh, so you don't have to write them down. Cal Gold's cool. Uh, SBA and IRS, EDD, eh, EDD, we don't want to go there. Unemployment, this has been another difficult situation. And of course, our website, most important one on there, sbdcsc.org. Uh, as uh, Linda mentioned originally, and we'll go ahead and open it for last questions at the end here, please, we will also be sending you a uh, evaluation uh, to your email. Please fill out the eval and send it back to us. We can't make any changes or we can't know that you, you know, liked what we did unless you just tell us, right? It's like your business. If, if somebody doesn't Yelp review you, you don't know where you're at. And heaven forbid, if only Yelp reviews you get are from negative. You got to have positive to offset if you get negatives, right? So definitely send the seminar evaluation back. And again, if you want to come in and see one of us, we've got Linda, we've got Rebecca, we've got me, we got David. David's great with uh, SBIR and, and uh, technological grants for tech companies. Uh, we have uh, Keith, uh, we have uh, Todd, we have uh, a wonderful group 
of, uh, I'll call them fancy consultants. What I mean by that is we got an HR consultant, a restaurant consultant, a manufacturing consultant, a uh, Kickstarter uh, online money-making consultant, uh, uh, all available to you at no charge out of Sacramento, San Francisco. One of the cool things about being a part of a large group, our, uh, 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 our, our geographic area of, the, of our, uh, uh, our group, Northern California group, I think is Stockton to the Oregon border and everything in between, including San Francisco, Sacramento, uh, even South Lake Tahoe, okay? All the way up to Alturas and uh, Wairica and uh, uh, Crescent City. So we have a large geographic zone and a great group of specialists available to you. There again is our contact information. Uh, Emily, our wonderful admin assistant, she is the one who sets the appointments. You normally talk to her first. You might have when you, you set up time to, to sign up for this. We didn't do it online. There's our address. We're currently on Airport Road uh, here in Reading, 5800. We're in the uh, Frozen Gourmet Building, the beautiful park-like setting on the right-hand side if you're headed south on Airport Road towards the airport. We're right across uh, Reading Utility is on the other side of the road. And then we are in the park-like setting. We have a bunch of family of turkeys out front today and grass, eating bugs and stuff. Beautiful spot. So we're I in that- I uh, your office, Joe. Huh? It's such a nice location. I love going to your office. It is fun. It's beautiful out here. Now we have fox and deer and owls and you name it. Are you sure? Uh, and again, if you're calling from outside the area or coming into this meeting from outside the area, you can find out where your local SBDC office is at that uh, americasspdc.org, find your SBDC, or NorCal SBDC, which is our Sacramento head office. Joe, are you Alrighty. sharing your Excel spreadsheet? Yes, I'll be sending you a copy of the Excel spreadsheet and if you want I'll send you a blank copy too of the Schedule C to play with. It's worth playing with it just to have the knowledge of what happens to those numbers when they hit your tax returns. So I'll send all that to you. Any final questions? No, thanks for your time. Thanks for your time everybody. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this uh, that'll be helpful. Uh, and again, if you want to go through the numbers uh, together, uh, we would love to uh, to do that with you. And uh, again, no charge. And thank you all very much for uh, attending. It does take Emily a couple days to pull everything together uh, to send out to you because the notes I have is it's going to be the slides, the recording of this session, an Excel spreadsheet, a Schedule C, and also the survey. In that survey, we'd love to hear what you thought of this experience. And also there's a question on there, can we improve? Because we would love to improve. And are there any other topics you would like us to train on? Because we would really love to deliver what you are requesting. Exactly, and don't forget to check our website again. We have multitudes of Vera. Linda teaches a whole group of classes. Uh, Rebecca has her QuickBooks classes, which have been highly attended and, and highly touted. Uh, we had last night a uh, how to do a podcast a class. Uh, uh, Megan, one of our communications experts, uh, did a po how to do podcast last night. So we're getting into a lot of different territory here, guys. It's, it's, uh, technology is going to play an important role in all of our businesses in the future. No doubt about it. So uh, the more we can get to you, the better off we're all going to be. All right, again, no more questions. Have a good evening, and uh, we'll see you as soon as possible. Hopefully, you come and see me. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Have a good evening.